so I'm Tim Tuttle. I'm the CEO of MindMeld. MindMeld is a San Francisco-based technology company. And we help our customers create really great advanced voice interfaces for their applications and devices. And specifically, we help companies that own data turn their data into really great Siri or Amazon Echo-like experiences that are becoming more and more common these days. <clears throat> so uh, what I'd like to talk about today is, first I'll talk about some of the trends that we're seeing in the adoption of these uh, of voice applications and voice, <clears throat> voice usage. Then I'll show some demonstrations of some applications that we've built recently for our customers. And then I'll talk about some of the other places where we're seeing investment in voice experiences and voice applications that you will see coming to market over the next three years. But first, uh, a little bit about MindMeld. So we are a, a company that's about four years old. We started as uh, originally as a team of AI researchers from places like MIT, Stanford, uh, and Carnegie Mellon. And we were specifically focused around this problem of applying the most recent advances in large-scale machine learning to solve this decades-old problem of trying to get machines to understand the things that we say. We had a, uh, a theory that the technology was finally getting good enough to make this happen, and this was four years ago, back when nobody was using voice for anything, and largely this is proving to be true. Um, our company is backed by some of the biggest technology companies in Silicon Valley, including Google, Samsung, Intel. Our customers include some of the largest cable operators, car companies, government agencies, and more. Um, and what we've seen over the past four years is uh, not only is the technology getting ex extremely good to make it possible for, people to, for machines to understand what users say, but for the first time since AI research has been working on this problem, there are significant numbers of users that are actually using voice in their lives every day. So I'll talk specifically about some of these numbers. Um, <clears throat> but what is the reason that everyone is so excited about this space <clears throat> again? This slide really su sums it up. So there have been improvements in core, long-standing AI problems like spe machine speech recognition. There have been improvements in the past three years that have dwarfed the improvements over the past 30 years combined. In fact, we now, at this point, the best speech recognition systems are demonstrably better, or arguably better, than humans. And this is the first time this has happened since people started working on this problem 60 years ago. So congratulations to everybody. You were there when this happened, and when your children in the future say, hey, was there a time when machines couldn't understand the things we say? You'll say, I remember. I was there when this problem was solved. So good work. Let's pat ourselves on the back, but we're not done yet. There's still a lot more work that, that we have to do. Um, and to put this in perspective, um, we started this company uh, four and a half years ago, and just to remember what the world was like back then. So. Uh, if you remember, <clears throat> as a consumer, the applications that you might have used. This was, Apple had not launched Siri yet. Most people, if they've used applications that attempted to understand voice, they use these telephone-based IVR systems, that, which were universally hated. So generally, people thought that this technology was unusable and very inaccurate. If you talk to researchers, most of them would say, oh my god, I've been working on this problem for 30 years, and it's never going to be solved. This is one of those problems that we won't see a solution in our lifetime. That was just four years ago. You fast forward today, and not only has um, the problem been solved, but researchers have never been more optimistic about this particular discipline. And on top of that, users are now embracing this and using it as part of their lives every day. No one would have thought this would have happened four years ago. So, of course, today we're like, oh, this stuff needs to get better, and of course it works. But that wasn't true. <laughs> four years ago. In fact, I looked, uh, I gave a talk last year at this conference, and that was the first time I showed this slide. And even a year ago, the recognition that this problem was getting solved was largely unknown, even in this community. Of course, today, if you look at the talks, many of the talks here are talking about these advances, specifically around speech recognition. That's brand new. That's happened in the past 12 months. So things are changing <laughs> rapidly. Um, so what does this mean for adoption? People, researchers like me and many others have been talking about speech recognition and language understanding, and they've been saying, oh, it's just going to be around the corner. And they've been doing this for about 30 years, so most people roll their eyes when anyone says this. The big difference today, and that's different from when people were talking about this five years ago or 10 years ago, is that for the first time, 
users are starting to use voice fu functionality on their devices, in their homes, every single day. And so what are the numbers? So two years ago, two and a half years ago, when Apple and Google and Microsoft started investing in speech recognition, they started advertising Siri, they, Google started <clears throat> talking a lot about Google Voice, and Microsoft started talking about Cortana. The, the dirty secret of the industry was no one was really using those applications. In fact, the only time that people were using Siri in 2013 was to make fun of it. They would fire it up, they'd ask it a question that they knew that it couldn't get, and then they'd tweet about how terrible Siri was. And that was the state of affairs for 2012, 2013. And then something quiet started to happen. In 2014 and 2015, all of a sudden these systems started to get pretty good at answering initially narrow sets of questions like sending a text message or making a phone call. And then in the past year, these systems have gotten good at doing a wide range of things. And as that happened, users have started to embrace these technologies and use them every day. So the numbers are, as of 2015, at this point, over 10% of all searches globally are done with voice. That is a huge number. That is over 50 billion queries every month being done with voice worldwide. It's not just in the US. It's happening in China. It's happening in the US. It's happening in Europe. Um, and that represents a huge shift in user behavior. The big uh, companies that are investing in this estimate that in less than five years, over half of all search traffic is going to be done using voice and voice interfaces. That is a very different world that we're going to live in five years from now. That's a world where everyone will expect that whatever device they use, whatever application they fire up, they will have the option to use voice if it turns out to be more convenient in whatever situation that they're in. Excuse me, yeah. This is overall search traffic, and obviously the, the over half of it nowadays is mobile. I believe those are the numbers. Yeah, so this, these are big numbers, and this has only started to happen just in the past 18 months, and the trend is continuing. Um, so again, this is, um, this is a big trend, and this is going to change how companies and developers need to build applications. They are going to now need to consider the voice mode of usage in addition to touch and addition to mouse-driven UIs. And make no mistake, we are, we are in the midst of a big change in user behavior. It's happening now, and, um, and it is going to continue over the next few years. So this is really exciting, and this is what makes this, this tireless message of talking about how computers are going to understand us, how it's different this time around. So what this means for companies is that as users start to expect that they're going to be able to use products like Siri to, to make voice requests, because in certain cases it'll be more convenient for them, this means that company, users, when they go into other applications, are going to be frustrated if there is no voice experience. Remember how it was 10 years ago when you'd go into your favorite, favorite website and they didn't have a search box on the website. And you're like, this is awful. I have to click through these menus to find what I'm looking for. And of course, over the past 15 years, every company needed to develop a search infrastructure to support that mode of usage behavior. The same is happening right now and will happen over the next five years with this mode of voice interaction. And this is really scary for a lot of companies because this represents a new technology stack that they have no idea how to operate. Um, that they need to include as part of their business. Uh, but the um, one way to think about this is these experiences, so a lot of people say, well, why don't I just ask Siri when I want to find a video or a restaurant? The reason is these applications, the reason that Siri does a really good job at understanding your request is because it's seen lots of examples of similar types of requests that users ask. And it also knows the range of potential answers that might be relevant in that domain. That's the underlying data that treats these, that trains these machine learning systems to do a really good job answering these questions. For many of the things that we want to do every single day, that data that is necessary to power those experiences is not owned by, it's not available to Siri, it's not available to Google. It's owned by lots of companies that have that data. So a company like Yelp has all this data that would be really great at helping people find restaurants when they're walking down the street. A company like Netflix would have all this information that would make it 
allow them to create a really great virtual assistant that could help people find movies to watch. And of course, with banks like Wells Fargo, they have all the information about how you can do banking with voice and companies like TripAdvisor. If you want to book a hotel, they would have all that information. And so what you're going to find over the next few years is these companies are going to learn how to harness this data in order to create these new voice experiences that will be far better and far more capable than the, the topical things that Siri and Cortana can do today. And of course, our company is working with these other organizations to help them do this. Um, so the, um, the challenge today is that most organizations don't realize the steps that are required to create a really great intuitive voice experience. At best, most companies think that you might just need speech recognition, and that's it, then you can... Um, uh, and then your problem is solved. The reality is speech recognition is just the first step at creating these applications. If you really want to create an experience like what users are accustomed to with Siri, in addition to speech recognition, you need to solve the natural language understanding problem. That generally means training machine learning models to understand what the user is trying to accomplish or what their intent is. You then need to understand the meaning of what the user is saying. That means not only understanding the meaning of the words, but understanding which concepts and words are most important for that particular use case and how to use that information about the words to ultimately fulfill the user request. And then, of course, you need to understand how to talk with the user, have a dialogue manager, so that if you need more information, the system can ask for that information and you need to know how to be able to communicate the right answer back to the user based on the things they've said before. And, of course, ultimately, you have to find the right answer or accomplish the right task. And that, obviously, is... a one of the hardest uh, machine learning problems related to information retrieval, question answering, you got to pick the right answer for potentially millions of options. All of this represents um, the technology you need to have in place. It is The systems exist today. They're all driven by some of the latest advances in uh, large-scale machine learning. And when applied right, they can work. But most companies, of course, um, don't know how to do this today, and that's where, obviously, our company, MindMel, is trying to help, but many others are as well. So what I'd like to do is show some uh, examples of some of the applications we've built for some of our customers, and this will give you a sense of what is possible today. So there's a couple of videos. If you could show the first one. So this is an example uh, of uh, intelligent home assistant application that we built for some of our customers. And the idea is that you might have this device in your home a couple years from now that would help you. MindMail provides intelligent voice interfaces for any device somewhere. or application. This demo illustrates how MindMelt can handle multiple domains simultaneously. We'll ask it normally spoken queries and see if it figures out what we're talking about, from video to home control to weather information. Okay, MindMelt, show me Clint Eastwood movies. Okay, MindMelt, show me It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Okay, MindMeld, is it sunny in Philadelphia? Okay, MindMeld, is it cool today? Okay, MindMeld, make it cool in here. Okay, MindMeld, turn on the lights. Okay, MindMeld, Turn off the kitchen light. Okay, mind melt, turn on the heat. Okay, mind melt, I want to watch the heat. Okay, mind melt, show me movies with Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman. Okay, mind melt, what are some Oscar winning movies from the 60s? Okay, mind meld. Can you turn the kitchen to 60 degrees? Okay, mind meld. Are there funny movies from the 60s? Okay, mind meld. Show me the temperature. Okay, mind meld. Show me six degrees of separation. Okay, mind meld. Make it six degrees cooler in the kitchen. Okay, mind meld. Lock the front door. 
Okay, mind meld. Turn off all the lights. So we built this platform as a way to allow lots of different companies to create um, very usable, state-of-the-art voice ex uh, experiences, customize their domain. And so last year, as you know, Apple launched Siri for the new Apple TV. And so we said, well, we have this platform that can build applications just like that. Um, why don't we try to build something that does exactly what Siri does on the Apple TV with our platform? But instead of taking three years to build <clears throat> and a team of 50 engineers, we did it in about three weeks with a team of three engineers. And we have this other video that shows mind meld side by side with Siri and the Apple TV, which I can show you. And, um, and it illustrates the point that um, this technology is now accessible to lots of companies to create really great experiences. So if you could play that second video, that would be great. So on the left-hand side, you'll see uh, TV with MindMeld. This, this is a is demo Apple of the MindMeld platform. MindMeld is used to build intelligent voice interfaces for a variety of domains. In this demonstration, we're showing a video discovery interface that anyone can create using MindMeld. We'll ask it some typical TV search queries that we think people would use, side by side with Siri on the new Apple TV. Let's start with basic queries of title and cast. Show me Harry Potter movies. Show me movies with Jeff Bridges. Maybe slightly more advanced queries next. Which Steven Spielberg movies star Harrison Ford? What are the movies with both Dustin Hoffman and Robin Williams? Let's try something more complex. Show me Clint Eastwood movies from the 60s. What were the Oscar winning movies of 2014? I want to see movies about artificial intelligence. Show me movies of aliens invading Earth. I hope this gives you insight into the power of the MindMeld platform. MindMeld can build some of the best voice experiences possible today. So um, these are just a few examples of the applications that we're helping our customers build. And the key thing here is that what you're going to see over the next few years, this technology is not going to just live on the lock screen of your smartphone. But lots of companies um, that actually have the underlying data to create these really great voice experiences are going to be creating these new applications that are going to make it more convenient um, for all of us to be able to find information and get answers to questions. So you're going to see not only lots of great applications like this in your home of the future, you're going to see better mobile applications to help you find products quickly using voice, book hotels, potentially <clears throat> find information when your hands are busy, when you're cooking in the kitchen, obviously when you're driving, and maybe even on your wearables. These are the places that you're going to start seeing uh, really great voice experiences come to market. And, um, and we will help a lot of these companies create these uh, great experiences that um, all of you will use over the next five years. So that's the end of my talk. I'd be happy to answer a couple questions if we have time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank <clears throat> you.